everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and I help those that are dealing with an adrenal fatigue nightmare. Today I want to review DHEA, especially as it relates for women who are suffering with an adrenal fatigue problem. So many women that I consult with, they want to know what can they do to get their energy back? What can they do to not be so tired when they first get up in the morning? What can they do to reduce their anxiety and their stress? They just don't handle stress the way that they used to. So when they get a stressor, when they get a phone call about a child, or when the boss is being a jerk, or when the husband is not being a great guy, or finances start exploding through the roof, all of the above, then they start to get anxious and they don't bounce back from the stressors that they, that they used to. They don't have a sex drive, they feel exhausted, they have brain fog. Uh, and they don't fall asleep right away at night. And so many questions that I get is, should I be taking DHEA for my adrenal fatigue? And what I will tell you is, number one, the best test to know whether or not you should be doing that is called the Dutch test. That is the dried urinary total cortisol test. It's a urine sample that we take at four different times of the day. We take it at dinner time, bedtime, when you first wake up, uh, two hours later, and if those that need to pee in the middle of the night, we do a fifth sample. And if you want to know about how to do that test, PM me or make sure you make a comment, a like, a share, and I will tell you exactly how to go about getting that test done. But either way, I uh, wanted to talk to you about um, DHEA. And DHEA is made in response to stress. It's a stress hormone. The way I use it as an analogy is think of your, your mutual fund. So you have a regular bank account, which is your cortisol. And when you're dipping into that uh, cortisol over time uh, or your bank account over time because of all the stressors that you deal with, ultimately your bank account starts to go low. And so what do you do? You dip into your mutual funds and you start cashing those out. So that's how I want you to think about DHEA. And so we had a particular case that we looked at just recently and there's three things that make up the total DHEA. There's your DHEAS, that's the sulfated version. The more inflammation you have, the more DHEA sulfation you're going to have. There's the etiocolonolone, which is an androgen, and there's androsterone. So we really want to know, if you're going to take DHEA, is it going to be a problem? Are you going to get too much androgen? Is it something that's necessary that will actually help you? So we saw that this patient who was in her 40s was at 149. And ideally, she should be between 20 to 150. Um, her total DHEA, though all of these threes together, it equaled 2300, and it shouldn't be above 50, 1550. So, number one, if I didn't do this test to look at all the different metabolites, I would probably say, yeah, go ahead and take some DHEA. Um, it can really help you. However, she's already really high, so we don't want to have DHEA. In fact, we want to reduce her DHEA. So we're going to want to do something that's going to help with her liver to clear these enzymes. And that's where methylation and genetic weak links may be impacting her. And we're going to want to look at her genetic testing as well. Um, but one of the things we really want to look at is we want to see how well does she break down testosterone. Because let's say we did give her some DHEA. She has a preference to break down testosterone in a more androgenic way. And we know this because we can see the dial is going more towards 5-alpha. So for women that are dealing with irritability, anger, oily skin, uh, male pattern baldness, maybe hair in unwanted areas, potentially they are upregulated with their 5-alpha and they are getting DHEA. Now, this woman particularly told me she's not getting DHEA. So why would her DHEA be high? It's because her adrenals are being stimulated and specifically her cortex is being stimulated. And what will stimulate that? Infections, inflammation, injuries, all of the above. So if she's got um, blood sugar dysregulation, insulin resistance, she is hypothyroidism, or if she has central obesity and she's gaining weight, all of that's going to impact her testosterone and her DHEA production. And in fact, DHEA is right above testosterone. So once we have DHEA, we can use it towards fighting a stress response, or we can be using it towards androgenic regrowth and repair and regeneration. 
Um, and so it's really, really important that you look at it from a complete picture. So let's just summarize. Women who have adrenal fatigue can get some benefits by um, taking DHEA if, however, their mutual fund accounts are low. In her case, her mutual fund account was high, and we don't want to be putting more money into that because the way that she breaks down that DHEA into testosterone is very androgenic. That's going to put a lot of pressure on her liver, and that's also going to put a lot of pressure on her excess um, androgenic hormones, and that's going to create a lot of symptoms. So I thought that this would be very uh, informative for any woman who's been taking DHEA for a long time and doesn't know if it's helping, or a lot of women who have adrenal fatigue and wonder if they should be taking uh, a DHEA. So um, hopefully you found this effective. Uh, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I do free 15-minute phone consults. All you have to do is click on the link below. Make sure you give me a share, a comment, a like. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Your Adrenal Fix. Check out my blog at adrenalfatiguesociety.com or make sure you go to my Facebook page at Adrenal Fatigue Recovery. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen and I look forward to helping you with your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you.